As we look at a soils map, we see all of these colors, but it, this map is designed around the soil orders, not around soil series. And so these would be characterized of soils that we could compare with other regions in the world. So for example, the oxisols that we see here, the very reddish, these are very characteristic of the humid tropics. Uh, and for the U.S. would be a part of Puerto Rico and Hawaii where we have those kind of environments. The sponsols are the soils of the cooler regions uh, that are humid. So it would be northern part of Wisconsin, Michigan, and up into Maine. These are areas where very often uh, there are granic matter accumulations, but the soils are uh, poorly developed and uh, quite gray uh, subsoils. Then the eudisols represent the major soils of the south uh, eastern part of the United States. Uh, these tend to be soils that are uh, the topsoil tends to be sandier, subsoils, uh, the clay has been leached down over time, uh, and these tend to be relatively uh, low fertility, high pH, or acidic pH soils. Uh, the vertisols occur along what typically are uh, river uh, drainage system areas, but characterized by soils that are high in clay that have very high uh, swelling and shrinking characteristics. And the old proverb that I lost my shovel uh, in a crack is what you would find in some of these soils because the cracks will get four or five inches wide and may be five, six feet deep. The alpha sols representing much of this upper Midwest area represent soils that are in the semi-arid to humid regions and have uh, clay, uh, clay loam type textures and are very rich uh, in nutrients. Uh, these are very productive agricultural soils. The uh, andesols are soils that occur primarily in the Pacific Northwest. These are primarily a result of volcanic activity. Uh, and of course, in the US, this is the most recent area uh, of volcanic activity. The aridosol, arid meaning dry, represents all of this uh, western and southwestern part of the United States, uh, predominantly rangeland, although in the more fertile valleys, uh, winter wheat, uh, would be produced, edible dry beans along the southeastern corner, northwestern part of New Mexico. Um, and then the entosols, uh, you can see, represent a fairly broad area. Uh, they are young soils, rather poorly developed. It may be a result that these are uh, alluvial outwashes from rivers or streams, uh, and so they haven't had a chance to age and to develop the uh, profile characteristics that we see for these other major soils. The youngest soils in the uh, U.S. are actually, as you would expect, the Jellisols, uh, Alaska. Uh, soils that are permanently frozen in many areas uh, or uh, really have very short uh, seasons of temperatures above freezing, so there's very little development. Uh, it's an area where there's a lot of organic matter that accumulates on top, but usually underlain uh, with permafrost, uh, and typically would be referred to as tundra regions. The histosols would represent the uh, soils that uh, are relatively dark, uh, somewhat decomposed, uh, but these are uh, high organic matter soils. Uh, and you can note that that's characteristic of northern Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Or if we were looking up in here, this is what we would be looking at in that area of being the uh, areas where we have peat and bog soils that would uh, make up um, 
the area where we see the histosols. The inceptosols represent those soils that have been uh, altered but remain somewhat uh, weathered. Uh, these are the soils that occur uh, under wide ranges of temperature and moisture conditions. So you see them uh, scattered uh, across the United States, uh, usually associated with uh, relief uh, or terrain that um, doesn't let the uh, soils develop to the same degree that we would see for the histosols, or more importantly, soils like the mollusols. The mollusols are the most important agricultural soil of Minnesota and the upper Midwest and uh, Eastern Great Plains area. The mollusols that we see here, you have very developed uh, profile, uh, dark surface area indicative of uh, organic matter, this is the area that evolved under prairie grasslands, the tall grass prairies as well as the short grass prairies, which today makes up this broad area of the uh, western part of the Corn Belt and what we would refer to as the eastern Great Plains. Uh, small grains, particularly wheat in this area, but lots of prairie pasture, uh, livestock agriculture. The mollusols, as you can see in this profile, high organic matter, mostly well drained, but because of those properties, become the most important agricultural soil of the upper Midwest and perhaps the most important soil in the nation. There's one unique area in Minnesota that is unique to the U.S. is the Red River Valley of Minnesota. The Red River Valley uh, really starts uh, in the southern, south central part and flows northward. The river runs north into Lake Winnipeg and the valley itself gets wider as you go north. There's only six inches of fall to the land as you go from uh, the lower end of the valley, and it gets wider as you go up into Canada, uh, being more than 40 miles wide uh, as you get at the Canadian border area. And what's unique is the flatness and the depth of soils that uh, make it possible to have tremendous crops, uh, even though we're in a semi-arid rainfall area with only 20 to 22 inches of rainfall.